It is out here in Bantry Bay that Marine Harvest want to develop a 3.5 million organic salmon fish farm. They say the projects will bring badly needed jobs to the area and will also ensure the future of their existing fish farms in the area. However, locals are not happy and they say that the project poses a threat to salmon and trout angling in the area and also to sea fishing. There are already a number of um, salmon farms in the Bantry Bay area and there are also um, a lot of um, mussel farms. Is it just the, the salmon farm that you have an issue with? That's correct, yes, uh, Bantry Bay already has two salmon farms, one at Gary's in Bantry and the other one which is owned by Marine Harvest in Castletown there. We feel that um, international studies have proven that uh, because of the size of Bantry Bay that it is uh, quite sufficient amount of uh, mussel farms in Bantry Bay uh, because otherwise it would become overexposed to uh, the salmon farming with its uh, consequent effect. And what is the effect? The effect is, first of all, you have a massive amount of fishes from salmon farm. Uh, a lot of chemicals are used for pesticides and other reasons. Um, but antibiotics are used because it is battery farming. Uh, these are all going back into the, the water column and uh, they affect um, the other species that are in, in the bay. The sea lice become endemic to salmon farming and uh, these latch onto the, the small small which are making their way through the estuary back out into the open sea in order to, to go to their feeding grounds in the north. So you, you basically think that there isn't enough room at this stage to bring another salmon farm into the area That's that do too much damage? That's correct, yes, we firmly believe that. Believe that. Kieran, how do you think your livelihood will be affected by the, the planned project? I think it will have a huge effect on it. Um, I myself did my leaving cert in 2008 and ever since I was, was able to walk I always had love for boats, always wanted to be involved and always wanted to get fishing. Uh, I didn't, when I finished my leaving cert in 2008, my dad is fishing all his life, my grandfather before him, so as you could see I am the third generation starting out now and uh, we fished the area where the proposed site is and it's an area that they're talking about taking in 106 acres of the seabed where we fish for shrimp and prawns at different times of the year and uh, when this new salmon farm go there we'll, we'll be able to fish the ground at all. Um, why, why won't you be able to fish the ground? What stops you? Because uh, we understand that we're, that we're being allowed to come in close to, to the cages but the cage is going to be there, the mooring ropes and different things are going to uh, be stopping us from working the actual ground itself. Uh, today could be a lovely calm day and we could set our pots out but tonight could be a very bad night and our gear could get caught. We come along tomorrow and they could be all tangled up. We won't be able to lift them and they'd be just lost and each creel that we operate, each pot is 30 euros so it, from an economic side of it, the point of view, it wouldn't be feasible at all so for you're us. You're losing a, a huge part of the. Sea. We're losing a part yeah. of our income and a part yeah. of our area where we've had the right to fish for for generations, and I think it's it'll huge have a huge detriment effect on the area. And as far as we're considered from a fishing perspective, um, anywhere in Bantry Bay, it'd be a no-no area for salmon farming, and it, we've seen. Yeah, my family have been living in uh, Rusk for the past six generations, and. Um, our main objection to it would be the fact that um, our choice is taken from us. You know, we can go into a restaurant, we can choose not to eat uh, farmed salmon. We can go into a supermarket and choose not to buy farmed salmon. But if we want to eat um, the likes of Bantry Bay crab claws, Bantry Bay prawns, they're still eating the same, excuse my French, but crap that mm. they're feeding the salmon. So our choice is taken from us. We still have, we are eating it even though we don't know it. So you think that the quality of the existing native shellfish and, and fish and everything will be damaged? Oh, it has this? to be affected. Like they're putting it, the, these salmon that are in cages, they're being fed. So what's falling, what food they're feeding is falling onto the ground. That's where, onto the actual uh, bay bed. And that's what the crab is eating. And that's what the shrimp is eating. What's left of them at the moment. So yeah, we're, we're eating it whether we like it or not. A mackerel's not going to swim past food. You know, if it's going to eat it, it's going to eat it. So if they took it on shore, if they took the farm on shore, at least it's monitored. And at least then our choice is still our choice of what we order in a supermarket or in a restaurant. Tony, one of the issues you have with the proposed fish farm is the, the current flow in the bay. Could you explain to me about how that could adversely affect the existing fish population? 
Well, the problem with these open net pens, as they're called, is that there's no containments, so that the extra food that falls down through, the feces from the fish that fall down through, and the chemicals that they've used to bathe them in, all go out into the open environment, go out into the bay. Now, if you have a strong tidal current racing out to sea, it's conceivable that this could be dispersed into the ocean. But in this particular case, halfway up Bantry Bay, studies have shown that what will actually happen, particularly in the summertime, will be the movement of all of this towards Adrigal, towards Bantry, eastern in the bay, going up the bay, not going out to sea at all. We've had such problems in the bay with eutrophication, with algae blooms, with disease coming from it, that uh, really to add something like this to it is very, very foolish.